Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. In this video, we're going to show you how to change out the Whirlpool defrost timer. It's going to be a very easy repair and should only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the instructions, the defrost timer, and a pack of screws. The defrost timer controls the defrost cycle, so the main reason you'd be changing it out is if the timer is not advancing like it's supposed to or controlling the defrost cycle. In order to do the repair, we have to open up the refrigerator door. In order to get the part out, we have to take out this control panel section, held in by four screws, and we have to take this trim off the front to get the other two off. They're quarter inch screws, so we'll do the back two first. All right, the next thing you have to do is take a small screwdriver and pop these knobs out. And then we can go ahead and get behind this front trim and pop it off. Be very careful when you're taking it off, you don't want to break it. Now that we have the front panel off, we can take out these two screws to get access to in inside. We can drop the control panel down. Now that we have the four screws out, we have access to the defrost timer. It's held in by two Phillips screws that are down here, which we can take off to get the timer out. Now that we have the screws off, we can pull the defrost timer off the wiring harness. Here's the old defrost timer next to the new defrost timer. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you get this timer, you have to make sure you read the instructions very good to make sure that you hook the timer up correctly so it works in your refrigerator. So you have a continuous run application. You have a cumulative version 1 and a cumulative version 2. You have to look at the wiring diagram and see what the picture of your defrost timer looks like so you can actually tell which one you're going to use. It actually replaces a bunch of different timers over the years going all the way back to the 60s. We printed off ours for this particular model by looking at the defrost timer we can see on the wiring schematic that it has the thermostat right here and an orange wire, a red wire, a pink wire and a white wire and on the cumulative version 2 you have the thermostat right here orange, red, pink and white. So on our version of the refrigerator we're going to use version 2 to change it. So once you figure out which version you're going to use that tells you which terminal you're going to connect the timer motor wire to. If you have continuous run it's going to tell you to hook it up to terminal 1. So you press it down on a terminal 1. If you have version 1, it's going to tell you to push it down on the number 2. And if you have ours, which is version 2, it's going to tell you to push it down on a number 1. So once you determine which one you need, you just push this wire down onto it, and then we can put the timer in. So once you have the wire on, Make sure you push it all the way down with a small flathead screwdriver and then we can put the timer into the refrigerator. So there's also some instructions in here that talk about you have to bend the terminals, some applications you have to drill holes, you may have to use the screws that they gave you with the timer and an extra connection for the wire terminals um, to put the timer in to fit your application. We're not going to go in and cover that because we don't have a refrigerator to show you how to do it. But if you do have one of those older ones, make sure you follow the instructions and put it in the right way. Now that we've figured out which one we need and we have it in place, we can put it into the refrigerator. If you notice the old timer, the holes are very small and the screws actually held the timer in place. On the new timer, it has these big holes so we can't reuse the old screws that we had in there. They give you two different like a big wood screw looking screw 
which goes all the way through and doesn't grab anything, so we can't use that. So we're going to have to use the small machine screw and then the nuts that came with the package. Once we mount it, we're going to put this in there. The only problem is that the little holes in the plastic are a little bit small for this. It doesn't slide through, so you're going to have to screw the whole length of the screw through, and then we can put the timer onto it. All right, now that we got the first one in, we can put the second one in. That hole was a little bit bigger, so it slid right through. All right, now that you have the screws in place, we can go ahead and hook the timer back up to its wiring harness. And then we can set it down onto the screws. And then we can put the nuts on. All right, now that we have the screws in and the nuts on, we can take a little 5 16 inch socket and tighten them down. All right, now that you have the new defrost timer mounted into place, we can put the control panel back together. All we have to do is lift it up into place and put in the quarter inch screws. The two with the big washers go underneath. And then we can put the control panel back on. It hooks in on the bottom. These uh, grooves right here go right into it these slots and then you push it up and snap it into place. Alright, the last thing we have to put on is the control knobs. Remember the one with the funky back is the refrigerator control. On the top is the narrow part, and on the bottom is the wide part. So we're going to make sure this narrow part goes towards the top, and the wide part is towards the bottom. Wherever your control happens to be lined up, it may be a little bit different, but you just have to look in there to see. And then on the freezer control, just a D-shaped knob. So we're going to get the flat right there, and match up the flat and put it in. And you just want to make sure, since we took this all apart, you can turn these to make sure they spin freely. And then set it to whatever you want for your refrigerator. Now that you're done repairing your refrigerator, you can plug it back in, make sure that it starts to cool off, and that the temperatures return to normal. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair, brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.